Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Zach Burke. I'm one of the fellows here at Mount Sinai. Next slide, please. Um, today, we have a 75-year-old uh, female who has unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma. She previously underwent left-sided deb taste, uh, drug-eluting bead taste, in February of last year, followed by stereotactic body radiotherapy. She presents with a new 2.1 centimeter segment 7 hepatocellular carcinoma on uh, surveillance MRI. Her total bilirubin is 3. Uh, she is a BCLC B patient. Her performance status is 0. And uh, she's child pew B8. Next slide, please. Here you can see that the uh, tumor exhibits uh, arterial enhancement and a portal venous washout with pseudocapsule on, uh, on the portal venous phase on MRI. Next slide, please. Uh, so the assessment, again, she's 75 years old. She has unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma with a new 2.1 centimeter segment 7 HCC uh, in the setting of prior treatment of the left uh, hepatic lobe. The options for management uh, in this patient, uh, we could talk at, at length about um, she's not really a good candidate for medical management. She already, in continued surveillance uh, with that treatment, she already has a new 2.1 centimeter segment 7 HCC. Um, yttrium 90, we spoke earlier about her total bilirubin level being 3. And so for this patient, we opted uh, for transarterial chemoembolization. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, so we're planning to perform subselective uh, taste with 100 to 300 micron LC beads. Um, we've already discussed uh, that this is now a transfemoral approach, and uh, we're going to target the tumor using cone beam CT and EMPO guide. We got uh, subselective. We went into the right hepatic artery, and you can see on the digital subtraction angiogram the tumor blush there. But we want to be as selective as possible because she does have an elevated uh, bilirubin. And um, uh, it's always mm -hmm. a good technique to go as subselective as possible. So we're all set up now for the comb beam. The, the setup itself for the patient and, and getting it all done while I was talking uh, was actually probably less than a minute. Okay, hold your breath. Don't breathe. Hold your breath. Don't breathe. Hold your breath. Okay, you can breathe. You can breathe. So, uh, Ed, are you using the uh, EMBO guide from here? We are going to try the EMBO guide here, yeah. All right, so it's going to so spin So that was the first us. arterial phase. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. Keep holding. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. Keep holding. Okay, you can breathe. So this is essentially doing an arterial and venous phase for the CT, correct, Ed? That's correct. It uh, processes the imaging, and the imaging on the left is the arterial phase, and uh, the right is the venous delay. Our timing was a little bit off, because this is actually very uh, arterially enhancing it with uh, the venous uh, washout, but it'll still work. So you can see that there's arterial vessels on the left, and all we're getting is really the, the parenchymal phase on the right. So what we do is we push the EMBO guide here. And then now what we have to do is segment our target. And so we go up to the target, which is here with the venous uh, washout. And we push new. And basically we just grow our target out like this. And so now you see a 3D volume rendering. It focused just on the tumor itself and nothing else. And we're ready to go. It shows you exactly the vessel that's feeding this tumor. Now, so, if there's multiple vessels, it'll show you multiple feeders. But for this tumor, uh, luckily, it only shows a single uh, vessel. So, Ed, so sorry, before you do guidance, can you click, can you make the top left image bigger and just sort of rotate it around? Because it's hard to see that 3D part. Sure. Yeah. So this is uh, the 3D image that uh, is constructed. And you can see exactly which vessel is now segmented out for that. Yeah. We put it to guidance. And there we go. Now it's a 3D roadmap for us to follow. And when Zach goes in there and steps on fluoro and starts with his uh, wire work, this will overlay onto the fluoro itself. Okay, so in terms of this patient, we're um, doing uh, drug-eluting bead tastes. 
Uh, the reason we're doing drug eluting beet uh, taste here is that um, it's better tolerated for the individual. Uh, when we do the conventional taste, as also shown by Precision 5, uh, you know, in terms of overall survival, there was no uh, difference in those two. But where we saw differences were in the side effect profile and systemic uh, distribution of doxorubicin. And so we decided to do deb taste here. So, Ed, we're looking at your, your roadmap here. Yeah. And can you show how you can zoom in and it, can, and it will keep the roadmap and rotate sure. a little bit? Because it looks like you might be in the right vessel. I, I, it's hard for me to tell on this. Yeah. What do you think? Of course, uh, it does look like we're, we're in the vessel. Um, you have to take into account, we just zoomed in twice, uh, just to give Zach a hard time and to demonstrate. We're going to rotate the II, and you can see that it follows as well. And keep in mind that with respiratory motion, that it's not going to exactly line up. But you can see that it does line up. You turn the II, that it's staying true to what it is. Sorry, Zach. No problem. So it does look like Zach did that pretty quickly. Let's follow that. And then uh, let's do a puff here. Okay. So um, not to, to diminish uh, Zach's skill set, but it was pretty quick, and we feel pretty <laughs> comfortable that uh, we're in the right vessel here. That was great. It looks like uh, it looks like you're ready to go. I think it's the one below. Yeah, we can probably get a little bit more subselect. We're gonna probably give it one more shot to get into the vessel on the left. Now she has very corkscrew vessels because of her cirrhotic liver. That's expected. Uh, but let's see if we can get a little bit more. Let's get a little greedy and see if we can get more subselective. Otherwise, I agree. I think it's okay to go from here because uh, we are not going to any of the um, inferior vessels going to segment five and six. So uh, what we're going to do at the end is we'll do uh, our deb uh, taste. And then to confirm, what I like to do is do a non-contrast comb beam at the end if it doesn't take too much time because the contrast is still retained uh, within the tumor. And so we can see if we had missed any tumor, any uh, tumor feeding vessels or not. Uh, you know, actually. <laughs> so we're going to just do a quick run here. And this is uh, what we would call super selective. So we're just uh, going to pull back a little bit and start treating here. Thanks, guys. Thanks.